Okay, we will talk here about uh, plume agate. As we seen in our classification, agate are divided in banded agate that are the rear agate, uh, agate with inclusion, that are agate with most plume dendritic or saginitic. So this all stuff are not real agates because it are not banded, but are a kind of chalcedony that we usually call agate because it is more funny funny words so the the genesis of plume agate is exactly the same as moss um, that uh, um, the uh, fiber the the filament of the moss grow mm, for a reaction uh, against the wall of the cavity of the cavity and the reaction form a mineral that grow in a colloidal solution so it's not allowed to crystallize but make a filament of a polymer or microcrystalline mineral so if there is space the filament ca con can continue to grow but uh, if we are in a very dry condition the mm, cavity is not totally full with colloidal chalcedony and is uh, uh, confined in the area occupied by chalcedony so in this case mm, the chalcedony must be um, very dense for uh, for to stay attached to the wall of the cavity and in this case the filament continue to grow uh, always in the same point and make a more structured moss so plumes are the same as moss but more structured so the composition the, inter the internal structure is the same but the shape uh, is different so moss and plume can be associated but uh, we, we have uh, seen that moss can be uh, can fall from the roof of the cavity uh, from the wall of the cavity can fall down and make a, a mound of detached moss at the base and this is the result of a dilution that uh, transform the colloid uh, that is very dense and sticky is a kind of gel stick it to the wall if it's diluted, mm, it is transformed in, in a more uh, liquid, uh, is a kind of sol, is a colloidal solution less sticky than a, than a gel. So the, uh, the gravity can um, make its work and the moss can fall down. So if there is a dilution, moss can fall down. So um, uh, plume can uh, survive only when uh, there is no further uh, dilution inside the cavity so the last episode is dry if we have uh, a further dilution this this uh, uh, this plume will fall down and uh, will be accumulated in between the moss and just uh, will be moss so we we cannot distinguish moss and plume if they are accumulated at the base. So plume, uh, if if co are uh, uh, associated with moss, they are later on. So the last episode is the plume formation. And in case uh, where uh, plume are uh, both in the upper and the lower part, the upper part are more structured. We will see in some image for understand better this concept. Okay, we see uh, what are made, the moss and the plume are, are made of the same. Uh, many minerals of low temperature uh, are consisted with a uh, grow uh, in the form of moss or plume. So uh, one very common is opal. Some are minerals of chlorite group with vermicular crystalline grow that make uh, a kind of filament 
um, some of this mineral uh, lamellar microcrystal with lamellar shape and also we can have manganese oxide uh, lamellan, iron oxide in form of ochre and the marcasite that is the the iron but uh, when there is low oxygen in the system so all these minerals are uh, recognized mostly by the appearance that by analysis because uh, stay inside chalcedony mm, means that at one moment they will be pseudomorphed by chalcedony so most of them are analyzed as silica as chalcedony because they are transformed so it's quite difficult to have a, a real analysis of all this mineral, mineralogical analysis. But um, from the shape, we have uh, a good idea of what is the real mineral inside. Okay, this is the shape of a plume. So we see that the material is similar to moss, is included I in, in this case in white chalcedony, but they have, like tree, they have uh, place where they born, they grow, they have uh, a structure, they change in shape, so this is a kind of plume structure, uh, often they are uh, folded for, for uh, at one side, so they can be similar to tree or to, uh, to plume depending on the shape. Plumes are very popular between lapidaries, the cutter of cabochon, especially in North America, where mm, there is many, many uh, deposits of plume, and uh, many lapidary like to cut uh, cabochon with plume inside. Some of them, like Pride Plume from Oregon, are very expensive, and uh, other stuff are more cheap and more uh, easy to, uh, to obtain, but most of the better stuff come from Oregon, California, Arizona, and Northern Mexico. So in the other part of the world it is quite difficult to find plume, uh, mostly because uh, people don't know how to look for this kind of deposit. Uh, like most, plume grow mm, on the wall of the cavity and they grow toward the center. So uh, we have in this case mm, almost no uh, control by gravity, so the, mm, the plume are freezed inside the calcedony. And when the cavity is drained, it means that the center of the cavity, we see here the center of the cavity, have been mm, filled by some plant bedding uh, at the end of the crystallization, but we can drain the center and we leave the upper chalcedony with its uh, botroidal structure. So this is the same as botroidal chalcedony, but uh, inside uh, the botroid there is plume. And is called, this structure is called angel wings. Uh, the distinction between moss and plume is not always so clear. Uh, this is because uh, are made of the same, so the only difference is the shape and the shape is subjective. In this case, um, this cactus plume are fibrous, uh, like, uh, like thick filamentous, so uh, it can be considered thick filamentous or uh, thin plume. In this case, we have a mossy red material with some dendritic plume inside with different color. But the scale is also important. For example, in this picture, this is a plume from Sonora, and you can see this, there is plume at different scales. So the big one are clearly plume. There's the medium one, we don't know, but the very small are more moss. And also this material uh, is a kind of moss, mm, but uh, more all a lot uh, is depending on the cut. If we cut in the, the a different direction, the appearance is less, less structured and more more like moss. So <coughs> the limit is a little bit uncertain because actually they are the same. The most popular plume are mm, well structured, well structured. So with <coughs> sorry, 
with nice shape, with nice tree shape, and uh, possibly floating in transparent chalcedony or good con contrasting chalcedony. So the more famous in absolutely are this from Friday that was uh, with many, many different color inside, but also this bloody basin, uh, very nice uh, color and shape, uh, stinking water, curry plume, and this is the last addiction from Haidei, that is prudent man, that is green, very beautiful plumes. In some cases, uh, different color are mixed together. We can have plumes of white, black, uh, yellow, brown, green, all together. So this is because it is not one mineral, it is a mixing of minerals, and also because we know mm, that mm, the chlorite family make uh, a very variable uh, um, palette of color. So we can have monmorillonite, chloride, uh, and many other minerals that have different colors. When dendrites are very thin and, and, and black, usually they are called dendrite. So we will see that the real dendrite are, are bidimensional, but uh, also when they are three-dimensional, we can have something more similar to a dendrite, that to a plume. So if, if we use, uh, correctly speaking, the, the term plume, this is not a plume, this is more like a tree. Okay. Uh, also another terminology is called flame agate when the plume is in the form of flame and is red in color. Of course there is similar stuff with green color of, or other color is usually called, depending on, on the owner of the, of the piece, it can be a green flame or a, or a different shape of plume. Okay. We say that the plume are moss mm, where the grow is inhibited. In case of dilution, they can suffer some gravity and can tend downward. So we see that in, in more, the more general case, plume are freezed inside the, the clear chalcedony and stay uh, blocked uh, in this portion of chalcedony so ca cannot fall down. But also without fall down completely uh, and uh, detaching from the roof, they can have a uh, little dripping down. So they suffer a little bit of gravity. This is mm, the case mm, when the dilution is very small. So it's possible that dilution arrive from outside, the reaction on the border, on the cavity wall, continue, so the the, uh, the reaction of moss continue, moss can continue to be produced at the boundary, and uh, uh, some part of the chalcedony uh, is diluted, but not until the center. So, it uh, continue uh, a little bit uh, diluted and give a small fall down. You see, in this case, the, the very strong difference between the upper uh, plume and the lower plume. In the lower uh, part, because the gravity is in contrary, so if, if there is dilution, the, the moss uh, obstructs the, the hole where the reaction occurs and the, the plume cannot grow. And so more is evident the difference more is important the dilution. Okay, this is another case. Uh, upper and lower uh, plume are quite similar, but we can see that upper portion are, are more elongated, have some more long tree, and the, the lower is more, more tough, and less uh, evolved. And uh, sometimes, the mm, the roof the can can broke some piece of the of the moss and uh, they can fall down. So a new uh, input of of plume can grow. Uh, so we can accumulate like uh, the same that uh, occur for moss. We can accumulate plume on the base, and more 
the load of the upper um, plume is strong and more the the lower portion are flattened and we cannot distinguish more the uh, original shape of plume. Um, gravity is also evident in some kind of plume like this Nidige range uh, from Oregon and uh, the plume uh, grow from from the roof they grow in this direction and they mm, show some kind of tu turbulence is clearly uh, due to the uh, colloid that is have very uh, strong uh, very high density so uh, is forced to make this convolution so uh, the plume fall down but some lateral portion of the plume would mm, be folded uh, in the back, uh, back direction so it's not real turbulence because this is so it's not really a uh, turbulence because the colloid is very dense but it's just a uh, back flowing okay more uh, real gravity structure are uh, some microstalactites that are found in some plume this is the uh, sample we see before and we can see if we look at the small scale here we have a close-up of this portion so we see some microstalactite uh, that is some small dripping of, of the black material in this direction so clearly this is the gravity this is the vertical this is up and this is down so uh, we can uh, reorientate um, a piece of agate that we, we didn't see in, in, the, in the field where is the original orientation so we know that this was oriented like, like this and the gravity is what fold the tree so we can call just by joking a kind of gravitative wind if we see a, a piece landscape uh, pattern and tree and the tree are folded by a kind of wind this wind is gravity okay we we want to try to do the same to other specimen this is from the same deposit gravier point from <coughs> east oregon and we see this this is a vein agate with very different plume from the two sides and uh, this is a nice tree folded by gravity wind and some dripping of yellow material in this direction so this is gravity if we reorientate the the fracture was in this direction more or less 16 60 degree but it's interesting that the lower side this side have the branch more structured and more thick than the upper side so we don't know exactly why there can be some difference in the chemistry of the rock or we don't know but this side have a more stronger reaction and different color of the blue this is another sam sample from Bullion Mountain in Southern California and we also have folded trees that are folded by gravity and the vein was almost vertical Death Valley, California also a red tree folded by, by gravity and the orientation, origi orientation was more or less like this this is Bird of Paradise it's a nice plume from Mexico and also we have all the tree folded by the wind and the, the sample was in this direction but there is an, a different case where um, the vertical is not so obvious uh, by macroscopic analysis so in this uh, sample also from Bullion Mountain we see that the tree are folded toward the left but there is a strange red stuff uh, at the, the right side so if you look mm, a, deep, uh, a closer uh, look with microscope we can realize that mm, 
the plume grow uh, perpendicular to the to the vein wall, the fracture wall, but uh, the dripping uh, go in this direction and produce a kind of mm, of jasper. This is uh, the same phenomenon that we see for jasper gate, where a stalactite uh, produce a dripping of a kind of moss very thick that is a kind of jasper and is deposited as a red or yellow jasper at the base of the of the nodule so in similar way in this vein uh, this was the chalcedony uh, thick bed uh, where the plume grow inside they fall down a dripping of thick moss like jasper in this portion that sediment inside the chalcedony strata the, the bed of chalcedony so this is just uh, one side of the vein the other side is in the upper side and there is an empty space here in the middle so uh, the, the, the jasper was sedimented inside the, the bed of chalcedony and when the, the plume lose material lose weight because of the fo uh, falling of jasper it tend to go uh, up, uh, up gravity so the orientation change so we can see here the, the plume grow in this direction fall the jasper and go up not down so the gravity uh, mm, is only for the jasper portion and the plume result to be less uh, heavy than the calcedon and the same happen in this uh, Riviera plume it is a very nice material from Mexico with plume very uh, nice structured with uh, very complex shape and start from a green moss and then there is some yellow and different hue of color inside the blue calcedon but the dripping produce a kind of uh, pink yellow sh uh, shadow uh, jasper that is accumulated in this bed and this this material so the jasper fall in this direction so this is this is the case so this is the plume grow in this direction, fall down here the, the jasper and th all this stuff are made of jasper and this also, all this pink is jasper. Okay, um, we change uh, theme and we see some plume that have a microcrystalline lamella structure, we say that is probably some mineral of the chlorite family and we see that in this case the grow is a mix of vermicular growing and uh, dendritic growing so they grow with uh, crystalline uh, growing and from some point at the base and go up, up, up. this is a kind of uh, famous de deposit from Wyoming medicine bow that they've a uh, very nice plume with lamel lamellar microscopic uh, crystalline structure other kind of mm, material uh, is the psylom psylomelane uh, in america they call salamelane it is a mix of manganese oxide and um, the plume have a very uh, metal appearance but uh, all the agate have metallic appearance also the banded portion is completely filled by uh, manganese and hole is totally black and this is another deposit of similar material from Arizona that they also um, manganese plume inside chalcedony um, but in this case the chalcedony is white another specimen from same deposit okay I will show you some picture of this beautiful specimen of plume 
This is one thunder egg of the famous Pride de Plum from Oregon. And this is a nice cabochon from the same material. They was famous because a single mm, tree have many change of color from yellow to pink, uh, orange. It's very, very curious. Not far from this place, Robinson Range, they make a more dendritic uh, uh, plume, but with very big branch. Uh, another classic is Curry Plume from Central Oregon also, where the, the plume are red, more, more dendritic shape, but the color are very nice because go from red to pink. And very similar are the plume from High Creek that is not so far, but with less color. In, so in this case, they are more gray. And very colorful is the Norte plume from Colorado. This is one of the plume more similar to Pride plume. And also they are from Tandereg, very big Tandereg. From Big Diggings, they come this nice yellow plume quite common and also this very famous black plume from Bishop Ranch in Texas this is a quite big big piece and they usually be cut very thin for appreciate the transparency of the calcedony and not so different is day and night plume from northern Mexico is uh, uh, a mix of black and white uh, dendritic plume in clear calcedony. Also from from Texas, from the Woodwood Ranch, is the in the bend of Texas, and this is a kind of uh, red uh, plume. They come from a small nodule called biscuit agate. They are usually completely filled by the red plume. And this is a um, a kind of another a new claim from very near to Graveyard Point is called feeder ridge and is mm, typically more uh, pink and yellow uh, uh, with the white mm, plume and uh, the, the aspect is quite brilliant and beautiful also very big piece of plume come from graveyard point and from regency rose was an old claim also in the same area with more colorful material and typically this deposit if uh, some marker site inside here is possible to see in the dark area there is a lot of micro crystal of marker site and also in this basement all the dark portion here at the base of the white plume is a, a micro crystalline marker site the more uh, often white are the plume from stinking water never colored but uh, <coughs> the chalcedony is quite clear and this is the prudent one agate from Idaho it is not so old it probably one of the youngest uh, deposit found of the plume agate very colorful color plumes this is a classical Riviera plume from Mexico and you can see the structure of the plume is very complex from the base where there is a uh, yellow moss sometimes this portion are called Indian moss then in the upper part we start the, the plume uh, shape and here at the top you can see the, the jasper deposited from the dripping of, of the plume so this is the top of the, the side of the vein so the other the other side is almost symmetrical. This is Eagle Rock from Oregon. It's a place with many, many plume with many colors. And maybe the, the biggest plume ever come from Canadian River in the north of Texas. This is, you can see, a very big specimen from a very famous block that was uh, saw with producing many, many slab for big collection and you can see the the structure of the, the plume are in festoon so there is a first grow a second and the third one then continue and the, mm, the changing color is very strong so 
hold the structured plume can reach more than 40 centimeters. This is uh, another very famous deposit, Bloody Basin from Arizona, where the plume are um, richly col colored in red and yellow. And this is another piece from Bloody Basin. This uh, show a kind of dis different structure of plume, more mossy. And this is uh, a kind of plume formed at the base of the of the of the of the nodule of the vein, and this is a, another piece of bloody basin, but where the the plume are inside the, the transparent calcedony in the upper portion of the vein. Um, a kind of flame is this very nice bird of paradise from Mexico. Is a deposit now completely depleted, but you can see the name mm, <coughs> because. The color are similar to the the bird of paradise and um, come change from orange, red, yellow, and go to pink and purple. So it's very unusual uh, mix of color. Uh, a dead valley is a very nice deposit in South California. Mm, the material is not very good for polish because the low color if powder uh, structure so it's not so good for make cabochon but uh, they, they can make a, a very nice uh, collector specimen if they are treated a little bit with epoxy and this uh, another dead valley with very nice pattern and bouquet agate is another material from Texas where um, small nodule if uh, are filled with a very colorful plume with different color with uh, very nice shape of flower bouquet and uh, they are um, quite famous for make a uh, very good uh, jewelry piece also if the size is not so big this um, another plume mm, from Willie Wells it, it was called Paisley lace, but it really is not a lace, it's just a tiny plume material, and the color is quite peculiar of this material. So, it's a characteristic of the plume is that it's quite difficult to repeat the pattern. Mm, banding nuggets are more similar, but plume are very peculiar of any deposit, and in some cases, you can distinguish in the single deposit. Um, material coming from one vein or from another vein. This is a green plume from Woodwood Ranch. This is a, a different kind of plume called Cactus Plume from San Carlos, Chihuahua. This is a very strange agate called Fern Agate mm, coming from uh, an unspecified specified area in Colorado, I don't know exactly where, but uh, is very popular because it's really characteristic never found a similar material and another plume mm, quite strange is this from Carline Mine in Arizona also the the color of the plume are brown and are a little bit uh, powders one of the best plume come from Salina in Utah. This a uh, many many color and a very very good quality of uh, chalcedony. A very strange material was found in Pioneer Mountain. Agatha was very big nodule, and few of them show a very nice plume. So this is a quite big nodule, more than 70 centimeter, and this portion have a very colorful kind of plume with ore of purple and lila quite rare stuff this is a window and plume from Utah uh, not another nice material this was a famous material from Oregon leather range uh, was characterized for uh, this kind of uh, lila color but was a very small deposit 
And out of mm, United States, there is few, few uh, plume. This was something found in, in Java. It was a small deposit, not so many peas, but it showed a very strange uh, structure that was very typical of this deposit and never found again in other place. And in this this kind of plume or moss, or I don't know what is. This is mm, more flame. Flame are found from actually from just two three two three places. This is from Bullion Mountain in Southern California. Very nice shaped flame. The more famous that give the name to, to the variety is from Chihuahua, and is mm, consistent of a very thick vein deposit with good flame and usually um, most of the vein have a small vein beside with uh, smaller plume. And this is uh, from Idaho and uh, this is actually a, a kind of, uh, of flame but of green color so depending on the owner of the piece you can call this a uh, kind of plume or a, a green flame but it's always same same stuff. This uh, a caption of Bird of Paradise that is from the same deposit of of flame, and uh, it show a kind of flame also. This is one of the few deposits out of United States with flame from Kerouche in Morocco. It show some kind of flame or plume, mm, very nice structure with a lot of iron inside, but uh, they. They are not uh, collected here as real plume material. And for finish, uh, a strange group of plume that grow from the bottom, it is from Woodwood Range, uh, is called Flower Garden. They usually uh, grow uh, as more or less vertical uh, plume from the bottom of the material, and they are mm, sometimes mixed with moss and the real flower garden have a very uh, intense mix of colors so it looks like a f garden of flower so we can resume now the origin of the plume agate is the same as the moss agate just with different amount of water in, in the system so the first um, step is to fill the cavity with uh, the colloidal so um, if water enter inside uh, the 5, 7, 10 percent of silica dissolved in the water mm, uh, stay inside and when mm, the water evaporate uh, the, this small percent mm, become more colloidal and stick to, to the cavity wall so every every rain uh, w we can fill the cavity and uh, some small input of silica will remain inside um, after mm, silica is trapped inside it's very difficult to to get out because um, when when water uh, starts to evaporate uh, the concentration is more and more important inside so the mm, the portion of silica is in a colloidal state so it cannot um, be extracted from the small porosity of the of the of the rock so a cavity in a basalt is is like a trap for silica so the silica is trapped inside and accumulate until after many many years we can fill completely the cavity with calcedon if it's completely filled, we can grow uh, moss until the center of the nodule. But if, if it's just half filled, the moss is confined in the, the portion of calcedon. So mm, when water arrives from outside, uh, the, the contact between rock and the, and the calcedony uh, dilute. Uh, the calcedony a little bit and 
uh, help to, to grow the moss. So the reaction with the host rock continues, and moss continues to grow. But in the inner side, when this, uh, the, 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 the arrive of water is not so important, so the, the dilution is, is not arrived there, so we have uh, just partial dilution on the edge, but we, we don't have dilution here, so this here is more more jelly, more dense, more difficult to, to move, so the moss is trapped here and continue to insist growing in the same point, make, make a, a structure of the stuff, uh, so it's making a, a plume. And for this reason, the plume change in shape from the upper portion to the lower portion. In the upper portion, um, any small dilution from water coming from outside give uh, a small uh, possibility to the gravity to make fall down a little bit all the structure, and we make mo mo more long plume. In the lower portion, uh, if there is no moss, the the, the plume are smaller and less structured because they stop, they close the porosity and they stop uh, the possibility to grow from the base. Uh, what is sure if, is that if we have both together, moss and plume, uh, the plume is the last step because if we have a dilution uh, and uh, moss can fall down, uh, uh, no, sorry, the, the plume fall down, all the plume fall uh, are indistinct indistinguishable from moss, so moss and plume are mixed together in this mound, but uh, if the nodule dry ag again and uh, starts to solidify, you can freeze this, this, this situation. So uh, this is just the last uh, group of plume that are that have grown from this nodule. So any further addition, for, uh, important addition of water can destroy this situation.